This is my 50th episode. You know, when I started making these videos for fun a few years ago, I never thought they'd really be successful. I was right. Anyway, I thought I'd do something different this time. Over the years, I've acquired some interesting machines that don't quite work. So here, as a treat, I'm bundling together 10 broken machines. They aren't perfect, but each one has its charm. Plus, everybody knows that top 10 lists do very well on YouTube. So let's roll the tape. Number one. This is the adding machine made by the Dayton Friction Toy Company in the 1930s. This machine is an example of what they call a coaxial wheel adding machine. It's like this Chadwick machine that I did before. Coaxial means you have a wheel for each digit and they all turn along a common axis. The Dayton Friction Machine is a pretty standard coaxial machine. The numbers next to the wheels tell you where to put your finger to add which number. I like to add a 4, I do this. I like how this one sounds. You can really hear some kind of big spring in there. But the middle wheel seems to be misaligned slightly. You see the teeth of the wheel are in contact with the case there at the top, so it won't turn right. This thing was marketed as a toy for kids, and I like it a lot. Actually, I think a kid's toy like this could still be successful today. In my experience, lots of kids and adults are pretty impressed even by simple mechanical computing devices. So who owns the rights to this thing now? you got to bring it back. Number two. This is the Swift adding machine from the 1950s. I really like this machine and I'm pretty bummed that it doesn't work. It's just jammed up. It's got a really elegant, minimalist design and you can tell it was designed first and foremost to be small. Just look at Bernice here. She's holding it in one hand. Just look at this thing. A basic 10 key machine boiled down to the pure essentials. And with a display too. Lots of 10 key printing machines didn't give you a display. You just had to look at the printout. But this little guy's got you covered. And when you need to change the printer ribbon, you just remove this little piece here, and there it is. See how the paper roll is offset to the side? Now usually the paper has to be in the middle, because the printer ribbon is on two spools on either side of the paper. But here the paper's all the way on the side. How do they make that work? Well, if you look closely, you can see the two spools are stacked right on top of each other to save space. The ribbon goes across in front of the paper, and then somehow winds back around behind the paper and into the other spool. I like this thing. Number three. This is a Burroughs 10 key adding machine from the 1950s. Burroughs was once the king of mechanical computing, but, but their machines always featured the full keyboard, 10 separate keys for every digit. The 10 key layout was an innovation that came from their competitors. A 10 key machine has fewer parts, so it's cheaper to make and repair, and it's faster to operate for some types of computation. I got this one from a lady in a retirement home. She told me that it was working, but when I got there, it wouldn't work. She said, that's the darndest thing. It worked the last time she tried it, which could have been in the 50s, I don't know. It seemed like a nice lady, so I figured I could get it working. I was wrong. It's not surprising, though. Nowadays, you find tons of electric 10-key machines by several big-name companies like Burroughs and also by smaller outfits. They were cheaply made, and today the motors are mostly jammed. The most interesting thing about this machine is the way it looks. The original Burroughs machine had an iconic Art Deco design that still looks great a hundred years later. This was a serious man's business machine. But by the 1950s, I guess they decided they needed to change the pace for their design, so it's this chubby bluish gray plastic. Not exactly timeless. Number four. This is the Summit adding machine. Look at that. Summit. Get it? Sum. It, like some, means add, and it means in reference to a thing previously mentioned or easily identified. I got two of them, and they're both broken. I got the first and thought I could fix it. Nope. And then I got the second one and thought I could fix it. And we know how that went. I think the axles have come slightly out of alignment on both of them. But look at this. This one has the original little paper hangy thing telling you how to use it. And I have the original plastic dust cover and the original instruction sheet, and the original flyer for the Summit check writer, and the original two-year warranty certificate. Too bad. I think that just expired. And it all fits in the original cardboard shipping box. Man, this is amazing. With scoop control. This whole set is in mint condition, except it doesn't work. What a life I'm living. 
Number five. This is the Royal Budget Master. Another cheap plastic 10 key machine. All right, what do we got here? Royal, that was a classic typewriter company founded in Hartford, Connecticut in 1904. Surprisingly, the Royal Company still exists today. And even surprisingly, -er, they're still making typewriters. Here's their latest model, the Royal Epoch, released in 2015. And here's another surprise. The motor on this thing isn't jammed. See, I can hit the button and it actually does something. But the number keys are messed up. They won't input any numbers into the machine. So all I can do is add zero over and over. But I can do that in my head. It does have nice quick release tabs on the bottom. It's very easy to remove the case and see the inside. I tried to poke around in there and fix the numbers, but no dice. Number six. This is a Dalton adding machine from the 1980s. Oh, son, what did they do to you? This thing's over 100 years old, and it's not looking so hot. Looks like it got wet at some point during its long life. Actually, I found this thing at a yard sale in the rain. This lady just had it sitting in her driveway getting rained on. I rescued it and tried to give it a good home, but the damage was done. Probably been done for decades. This thing is super tall. Look how tall it is compared to my Adiator. I always wanted a Dalton machine because of the weird button layout. They got the 10 digit keys, but instead of the now universal 3x3 three three arrangement with the zero at the bottom, you get two rows of five digits. And look at those numbers. That's not a joke. This is really how they arrange the numbers on this thing. You got one through four all clustered on the left side, five through nine on the right side, and zero in the middle. I guess somebody thought that this weird arrangement made sense. It seems confusing to me, but what do I know? You're meant to operate it with your left hand on the keys and your right hand on the crank. That same weird key layout was used on some other machines like the Facet, a pinwheel machine from Sweden. I don't have one of those, but it seems like the keys on that one would be much easier to press, so it looks like a better fit. Hey, here's a picture I found online of a Dalton adding machine pin. Every damn owner a booster. I don't know what that means. It even had stuff printed on the inside of the pin. The machine that does things. Not mine. Number seven. This is an electric 10-key Montgomery Ward adding machine. Montgomery Ward, it was one of the most important retailers of the 20th century. They were the original mail-order retail business, like the Amazon before Amazon. This machine is broken and unremarkable. Really, these plastic 10-key machines just don't impress me at all. Strange to think about it, the Montgomery Ward Company was an American icon. This machine right here is a bit of a metaphor, isn't it? You hold this in your hands and you're holding America the way it used to be. And it don't work no more. Number eight. This is the Regna adding machine. It's a pretty standard cranking printing calculator made by the Adwell Company in Norway, probably in the 1950s. I'm pretty sure this is the only Norwegian machine in my collection. I owned this thing for several months thinking that it was called the Regina, but no, it's Regna, which I think means something like counting in Norwegian. I always loved the classic octagonal button shapes. This was the style for a lot of old machines. The really unique thing about the Regna is this little two-headed button here. Would you believe me if I told you the first time I saw the Regna, I saw that weird little two-headed button and I said, I want that. This machine is hopelessly jammed up, but it's meant to work just like the totaling button on a Victor 600 or 700 machine. When you grab the crank, you reach out with your thumb and push the total button forwards as you start to crank it down. Or if you want to do a subtotal, you push with the other side of the button. The Victor machines use this special molded triangular button cap, but them Norwegians just decided to put two normal button caps on one post. Gotta like that. Number nine. This is an electric Victor Tally Master. Yeah, another plastic 10 key machine. It is the worst of them all. It's broken, it's ugly, and I dislike it. Actually, it has some cute features. It's got a carrying handle, which is nice, I guess. It's got a pair of windy things on the bottom so you can wrap up the cord, which I guess I like. It also has really nice quick release buttons on the bottom. Actually, these work better than any other machine release buttons that I've seen. 
but I can't get over how ugly it is. It's got that sort of 1970s orange brown beige aesthetic that I think just looks terrible. Did anybody ever make a nice looking brown adding machine? You bet they did. Number 10. This is a beautiful comptometer model H from the 1920s. The classic comptometer is one of the most beautiful machines ever made in my opinion. And it works perfectly, so it's not for today. This is a Comptometer Model 12 from the 1950s. It's a piece of garbage. It's like a classic Comptometer, but much uglier. And it's electric. See, when it's not plugged in, the buttons don't do anything. And when I plug it in, still nothing. But this one is really puzzling to me. You know, a standard action classic adding machine makes you pull the crank every time to add a number. And if you want to multiply, you gotta add over and over again like this pretty slow and boy are my arms tired. So then they invented the electric motor driven machine. You just push the button. It's faster and easier. I get that. But the comptometer was always a different kind of machine. It's a key driven machine. To add you just push on the keys. You don't turn the crank. The crank is just for clearing it. If you want to multiply by repeated additions you just push the keys over and over again. Okay. Now this one has an electric motor in it. But what's that supposed to improve? I can already hit the button super fast and there's no crank to tire my arm out. Even if the motor was working, I'd still be doing the same thing, right? Just pushing the buttons over and over. So why make one with a motor at all? It's just another opportunity for it to break. It has this little flip stand on the bottom to make it a little taller in the back. I guess I like that. But anyway, now I'm left with a giant, heavy, broken, electromechanical comptometer. Should I just throw this thing away? Actually, I just came across an artist and lamp maker named Fiona Bradshaw, and she made a standing floor lamp out of an old electric comptometer. It even uses the cord coming out the back as the lamp's power cord. That's amazing. This comptometer is real heavy, so that lamp won't ever fall over. Makes me wonder what I could make out of this thing. Do you know what I could make out of this thing? Leave me a comment. Well, I guess that about does it. You think I'm going to make 50 more episodes? I don't know, I guess I might as well try.